Welcome back to the Sam Holmes Sailing Daily Video Vlog. Uh, I went to the hardware store and got, this was the old uh, deck fill connection to my water tank. My mom did a great job of cleaning them out the other day, but I'm not gonna use a deck fill anymore. I'm just going to plug it up. So I went to Ace Hardware and I got this little plug and hopefully that will fit in there nicely. Does it fit, does it fit? It fits, awesome. So then this connector goes to the, oh, I guess this is the water pickup. And then this one is the vent. And then we added two more inspection ports the other day. Just to, so we can clean them out easily if we, cause it always gets this like mildew and slime and stuff in there eventually. Uh, but this, I'm taking out the deck fill just so, uh, I don't know, simplifies things. I always fill it up from the inside anyway, cause I like to see when it's full. I also went to Walmart yesterday and I got a, a new hose for the for the dryer. This one's long enough that I don't need to use two of them. And uh, I need to, to attach the uh, little area where the water goes out. Um, so I'm just gonna screw this, this little strap there. So that looks like it'll work good. This thing feels in there secure, the gray water. Um, I'm just gonna attach this hose now. All right, mail time for today. I got LED light strips to go in the attic. And I want to do that because I'm running the place out and I'm going to be moving a lot of my stuff up into the attic that I'm storing here. And uh, it would be nice to have some light up there when I do that. Let's see what else we got. We got an order from Online Metals. So I'm guessing it's metal. I ordered this uh, bar of bronze a little bit ago. And this is to deal with the... The issue, the issue with the windlass, uh, I, my, I believe my chain and the gypsy are matched correctly. They're using the right size chain. Uh, it could be that gypsy's a little worn, but I think the primary cause of the chain skipping, it's always done even when it was in manual mode, is the way it's mounted. So basically you're supposed to have uh, this twofold. The, the windlass should be mounted a little bit higher because we need the, we need the chain to wrap around the, uh, the, the, the drum, basically. And the way it's mounted right now, it's pretty much, le it's like only using about a, a quarter of the drum. And if the windows would mount a little higher, the more the chain would wrap around the drum. And then the other issue is the, uh, the chain locker. It's, it needs to have a, a longer fall for the chain and that would pull, put more weight on the drum with the chain and hold it tighter on there. And basically my boat's just so small that I don't have enough room in my chain locker to have the chain fall that far. So those are probably the issues why it's skipping. I don't think it's a big deal. I probably, I think I'm, I'm thinking I might be able to just put my foot on there. Uh, but one idea I had was to build, yes, it's all that's in here, <clears throat> a little like roller that actually pulls the chain downward onto the drum, right? It goes right in front of the drum. And that would let the chain have more contact on the 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 gypsy and uh is it a gypsy if it's just chain yeah i think it's gypsy wildcat that's a wildcat is the drum that does a chain and the uh rope a gypsy is just chain i don't i don't know if that's right uh but this i'm, I'm, I'm gonna play around with building this maybe if i have time uh, if not it's no big deal so here's that roller i was thinking of using so basically the chain would go underneath this roller and i would use this metal to create a, I uh, only needed a few inches, but a foot was the minimum size to make like a little bit of a, like an L bracket. Uh, and I'll weld it together. And then there would be a bolt that goes through here. So I can just slide the chain underneath this drum and it would pull it downwards onto the, uh, the windless, windless gypsy. And this is the last package. I'm excited about this. It's one of those bug zapper lights. I have been getting eaten up at night when I'm in bed. Um, by by the bugs and maybe this will kind of help me out Ooh, that's cool and the final product to the day today is a pair of these uh like chinese cam cleats i've used these though okay they're all, before they're all right these are to go in the uh in the cabin and that, that that's what the strings will that clock the uh what's it called the cockpit lockers we'll, we'll we'll go through here and actually these ones are these ones are a lot nicer than the previous chinese ones i've used what brand is this this, this is mx eol 
Um, actually, I think I used some of their uh, Bimini fittings before, and they're pretty good too. Definitely not like Harkin or even Ron Stan, but it looks pretty good. These ones come with the little metal fair lead, and that goes in the base, I guess. And this goes, I think it would go like that. That's even got a little bit of a chafe protector. Again, I don't know if I would use these like outside for for lines, at least on a big boat, maybe a smaller boat, that'd be okay. But you know, for just little um, less important jobs, I think these would be work great. So let's uh, find a screw that'll work. This uh, Harbor Freight sorting tray has been awesome. It's one of those little things that just works really good. I think these might be a little bit longer. What do we got in here? That's a little bit aggressive, but yeah, too big. That's what we need. Perfect. Found four of these, so these will go on the boat. And then let's put my collection of stainless steel screws. You gotta have a big collection of stainless steel screws if you're gonna work on a boat. Um, and then I got my machine screws here. I tried using organizers and sorters and stuff, but there's just so many, you know, pan heads, um, uh, Phillips head, uh, flat head, uh, like oval heads, uh, different lengths, different, like how do you, how do you just sort them all? You end up with this like a huge container and uh, I like to just mix them all together and then sort through the ones I want for that project. So the lines that lock the cockpit lockers are coming through here and here. And then, I, so I just need to decide if I want these cleats to come right here or a little further back there. So I'm not really able to get the drill back there. So I think that solves it for me. I'm going to mount them out on the front edge here. Maybe if I get a right angle drill attachment, I'll mount them back there down the road. So we are mounted up here. Let's run the line. Looks as a hold. Seems to hold this thin rope with no problem. Really pull on it. Yeah, that is awesome. That's gonna be great. And then um, see, it makes they have two versions: one with or without the uh, the fair lead. And for this kind of application, I think I definitely want to have it with it, so the rope doesn't fall and get lost. And again, that is the rope comes out here to the cockpit locker. If you didn't see the previous video. Uh, or maybe I haven't posted a video about this yet, I don't remember. But yeah, so that's how the cockpit lockers close. The ropes go through here. And I did this because, for one, I don't really like these latches. I'm always kind of like bumping up against them and uh, they don't work all that good. And once I was working in here and the lid shut, the latch, latch closed on the outside and I was trapped in there. Luckily there was someone around, but could you imagine if I was out at sea and that happened? or? I mean, even, I don't know, I got out of the workshop and no one was around. I have to wait for the UPS guy to let me out the next day. So now I got the second one under here. And then there is the cleat number two. So I'm very happy with that setup. We'll see how it works in the real life. But I had something similar on the Swedish fish and once I added the cleats on the inside, man, it was awesome. So these are the lamps I got. They're the, uh, the Fragile. I suppose they're probably trying to sound French, but they're definitely made in China. They feel like the cheapest light I've ever seen, but they'll work for the attic, doesn't really matter. I also like that they have uh, plugs and sockets on them, so it should be really easy just to daisy chain them all together in the attic. So probably right here would be good. So I'll just grab a, a drill and some screws. Just... Okay, let's try it out. Whoa, that's so much light. Yeah, these four lights are gonna cover the whole attic. No problem. That one light is enough to see all the stuff I have up there right now. So I can put the next one like eight feet down there. There we go. That is great. Look at all that light. And I haven't caught any mice yet. 
The only downside is having the light up here has really brought to my attention how many animal turds there are up here. I feel like I never have the right size washers, so I went to Ace the other day and I bought all the sizes and stainless steel and plenty of them. So I'm just gonna add those to my washer collection. So this last package I got is from Online Metals. Looks like some longer stuff. I got, I got some more uh, uh, quarter inch stainless steel rods. <clears throat> and these are to use on the wind, wind, wind vane push rod. In the past, I made these out of a uh, uh, threaded rod. Uh, but I think I'm gonna try, I had, I had one of them kind of break on me. I think I'm gonna try to make them out of solid rod and then just use a, a die and thread the end here. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so I'm gonna start by putting a bend in here. The bend came out pretty good. Um, I'm going to try to run a die through this. Uh, and I think it might be, I never did, actually used a die, I don't think. I think it might be easier if I kind of bevel the edge a little bit on the bench grinder. So if the Harbor Freight dies are as bad as the Harbor Freight taps, I think I'm gonna be in for a fun project here. I think we're getting somewhere. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> the handle broke. So I stripped the uh stripped the uh, threads out of this little set screw but luckily I have a tap we'll just go the next size up I have done some research and it sounds like you want the stock to be just a little undersized and that also that sometimes it comes oversized so let's see what we're looking at it looks like we're at 0.25 uh, exactly so Maybe with these these uh, dies, we just need to grind a little bit more away because this is not working very well. So we got we got it all the way threaded. Those are some uh, I don't know pretty poor threads, though I would say there's definitely a few that got ripped off. Let's see if we can fit a screw uh, a nut on there. So Annette does thread on there, so I guess we're in business. Just need to do the same thing to this end. All right, try number two to fix the die handle. Uh, the pipe wrench works really good once you get going, but to start it, I think you kind of need one of these handles because it wasn't going on. It wasn't going on straight, no good. So I'm gonna have to take a break from this. This is just getting too frustrating. I didn't think this would be that hard, you know? Um, I can't find a way to hold this tight enough without like twisting the or slipping in my vise. I did get this side done, but uh, I needed to thread like a few inches on this side. So we'll come back to that later once I figure out what's going on. I also got some more aluminum strips. These are gonna be backing plates for my uh, bronze chain plates. Aluminum is just easier to work with and cheaper. I think the next project we're going to look at will be this Dorade vet. This beauty was provided to me by MarineDepotDirect.com. They reached out to me and asked if I wanted anything from their website. And I was thinking that this uh, old plastic Dorade vet thingy was a little bit unbefitting of such an awesome boat like Pickle. And so this thing will just go back here get plenty of air for the engine and it's got a, a deck plate you know for closing it off but that thing is beautiful look at that you gotta be careful with this much bling on board i should probably build a drain box for this at some point to like trap the water from going down but for now i think this will be okay it's kind of facing in to the cockpit There. Sweet. 
Will fit. Almost. This thing has to fit, I guess. It needs to be just a little bit bigger. So the hole looks pretty good, but you can see there is wooden core in this section of the deck. So I need to take some epoxy and I'll just paint this so it's nice and sealed up. And then I'll, I think I'll probably over drill and fill these holes too, so that they'll be uh, sealed up too. You don't want to get any water in this nice dry part of the deck. And I keep seeing this hole, I need to put something there. But while I'm cutting holes in the deck, I think I might put another <coughs> chain pipe right here because I've got two stern anchors. And if you're asking yourself, here's a 28 foot boat with three chain lockers. Yes, yes I do. It's my own boat and I can do what I want. I'll probably seal these up with uh, some of that silicone tape stuff before I go offshore. All right, it's a big hole. Oh, darn, I broke a drill bit. Oh, it's stuck in there too. Here it comes. Okay, time for attempt number two. Let me move this guy too. That's gonna be a fun plug to remove. And now we've got our hole. Uh, it's a little tight with the epoxy in there. It's gonna be hard to fit. So I think I need to widen her up with this guy. And that is how you turn a perfectly round hole into a perfectly lopsided hole. And back to the epoxy station. You gotta have epoxy station. One. While that epoxy is firming up, I'm going to drill a plug out of this uh, this teak knife holder. I've been using it for scrap teaks. So there's our plug. Perfect circle. I just need to trim up these little edges. It's a tiny bit too small. Maybe I'll make a second one that fits on top of that. Pretty good sunset today. I left a little bit extra on this one. I'm gonna put it in upside down. There we go, that's perfect. Just the right height. I'm just gonna have to turn and wipe that off. Let's get that wood grain lined up nicely. Yeah, that's better. All right, I'm gonna wipe off the excess. Hope that stays in there. All right, we're back at the laundry laundry room. And uh, I got a new hose. Let's see if that works. No leaks here. No leaks there. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, that's not good. Capped it off with this little hose splitter for now. Does nothing work? Okay, hose splitter number two. I think we are finally in business. This is a big win for sure. I'm gonna take a stab at refurbishing this uh, uh, plastic deck vent too. It might be fun to use in like an outhouse or something. I had my mom use this same paint on my door and it looks awesome. I really like that door. And it looks like it's working great on this uh, Dorade vent too. Amazing the difference the paint makes. If you're wondering why I go with red, I just go with whatever is uh, uh, was mixed wrong and on discount at the hardware store. So it's nine bucks for like a $30 can of paint. That's looking pretty sharp. I think a second coat, that'll really look great. And I can use that for another project. So this door always kind of binds up at the top. So I'm gonna saw a little bit off. Closing good. Sweet. 
these uh, three quarter inch PVC tubes are gonna go in the, the sail pack, but they're not quite long enough, so I need to splice two together. And I'm thinking what I'll do, so I just need something to go in on inside of them so they can both fit in and I'll screw it in. So I think I'm gonna use this piece of, uh, this old piece, piece of old uh, teak uh, rub rail. So I'll just cut it down the table saw until it's the right size. So my laundry just finished, so I don't really want to work in the shop and get it all dirty again. So I'm going to switch gears and do some sewing. Uh, this is a slack line end, and it came undone. But now I've got the, the thicker 138 thread, um, so hopefully that'll be strong enough. I don't really do high lines on this, so it's okay if it does break, but it seems to be going through this just amazingly well. Look at that, no problem at all. Even going really slow like that. I'm just gonna sew some boxes and X's. So I think I'm gonna call it a day. Uh, I got a lot done today. I'm gonna need to do more on the boat tomorrow. Um, I got a pretty positive response on the Patreon about the daily vlog, so I'm gonna try to keep it up. It also worked out pretty well for me. The last video only took me 30 minutes to edit. And so hopefully this one will be similar. My normal videos take like two hours to like three or four hours for the longer ones. So that is awesome for me. I'll see you guys next time.